My name is Kelly Papo. I'm with Invino Engineering LLC, located in Tampa, Florida. Our website is www.invenoeng.com, and please stop by our new website, which has more technical information, videos, best practices, etc. Today, I want to talk about steam trap selection process and steam trap station components. The selection process is quite simple. So we have steam trap selection process by application. So we want to simplify it. So we'll do it by application. The application process applications cause a load variations and varying operational times. And so kind of say loads can be very low, 100 pounds per hour, and then be increased all the way up to 4,000 or higher pounds per hour. They can be in operation for two hours a day or 18 hours a day. So times vary when the process is in op operation. Pressure variations. You know, we can go down to low delta pressures because of steam valve is, uh, that's controlling the process is gonna modulate down or it can be very high. The other thing on process applications, we wanna be able to vent down condensable gases to help us get rid of the gases so we get uh, fast startup time. Example, it is dryer, CIP system, James units, heat exchangers, can be anything out there, steam coils. The non-process applications have steady load uh, condensation or steady condensate loads. Yeah, typically loads that are always steady. Might be 250 pounds per hour, might vary 75 to 100 pounds per hour, but not much variation. In operation, most of the time, a lot of these units will stay in operation for 365 days a year. Gives us a constant pressure and delta pressure, which makes us easier selecting the steam trap and sizing the steam trap. Low requirement for venting non-condensable gases because it's always in operation. Example, steam line drip legs, steam tracing, unit heaters. When we come to steam trap selection process, you have mechanical inverted buckets, mechanical float and thermostatics, thermostatic bellows, thermostatic bivalve, and the thermodynamic design. So those are your operational designs. Each design has pluses and minuses, so you have to look at the pluses, of course, but you also have to look at the minuses. So make sure you understand the minuses of each design, and then you will have a successful steam trap station installation. One of the things I always talk to people about, steam trap station design standard. Have a standard for a steam trap station. Don't put in steam traps, put in steam trap stations. The station's made up of isolation valve, strainer, steam trap, and check valve. One of the things when putting in a steam trap station that we have to be aware of is elimination of leak points right here. So the thing is, is that I want to do whatever I can to get rid of leak points. And the thing about it is I'm going to use welding as much as possible. And yes, the welder uh, has to be certified to do the weld per B31.1 or whatever code compliance you might be under. And the second thing is, is that the, I use flanges. And people say to me, flanges leak. Flanges do not leak. People make flanges leak. If flanges are installed correctly, there is never a leaky flange. I mean, the other thing you have to remember, we use tube connectors or fittings, tube fittings. Why? Because they're guaranteed not to leak. Because we use them on all types of process gases. So... These are your selections besides using threaded connections, welding, flanges, tube connector, and fittings. Isolation valves. My preference is always ball valves right here. The thing is, is that people ask me, ball versus gate? When's the last time we had a, any great revolution in a gate valve? 1941. Ball valve technology has accelerated in the last... 15, 20 years, same as butterfly valves. The other thing is, is I want a valve that doesn't leak internally. 
ball valves will get to class four or higher. So it gives me a positive shut off and I don't have to worry about people having steam spitting out on them or hot condensate. It also comes with locking handles. So isolation valves, ball valves, of course, you know, standard, usually are class four or higher. So the next thing on the uh, steam trap station design, strainer. Anytime you put it in a steam trap, you have to have a strainer ahead of that steam trap. One of the highest failure, the number one failure rate with steam traps is corrosion material getting into the steam trap. Stop the corrosion material getting into the steam trap and you have longevity. Any steam trap at 250 PSI today should last 15 years. But one of the things is, it's not the steam trap fault if corrosion material is getting inside the steam trap. So strainer, 20 mesh or higher. The other thing is, is when you put a strainer in, put a blow-off valve on the strainer so people will blow the strainer out. And the other thing, make sure it's code compliance. And the thing is, is that, what do I mean by code compliance? Is the operating system is 150 PSI, 366 degrees. And I put a steam trap in there, rated for 150 PSI, 366 degrees, am I in code compliance? Probably not, because the safety valve protecting the system is set at 250 PSI, and you have to have a steam trap component, all components, isolation valve, steam trap, to meet that safety valve setting. So it's not operating pressure to be in code compliance, it's a safety valve setting. The next thing is steam trap. We talked about before is performance, code compliance. And the next question I always get, check valves. For, do I need a check valve? And people say, you put a steam trap in, you need a check valve. I just installed, you know, 1,800 steam traps. Not one of them had a check valve after it. The only time you need a check valve, if backflow can occur. If backflow doesn't occur, then you don't need a check valve. The other thing is no swing check valves. Here. Why? What's a warranty of a swing check valve? There is no warranty of a swing check valve. You have a high failure rate. So if you're going to use a check valve, make sure you use a this type check valve. And it'll give you the performance you're looking. But remember one thing. If you're going to put a check valve in, can backflow occur? Then you need a check valve. If backflow is not going to occur, then you don't need a check valve. Now, putting it in a steam trap station, one of the things to look at is, is using on the smaller capacities what we call a universal connector. This is the whole unit right here. So you have your isolation valves here. You have your connector which the steam trap will connect into and the strainer and the blow off valve and the strainer. Very small and compact as showing down here. Nice installation. So the thing about it is, is that if I go ahead and put in a standard you know, steam trap in, so I have all these connections here, 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 here. See, so you start counting up all these connections I have to make. And then the size of the package is like this here. It's huge. So when in really essence, I can have this here. Very small and compact. Or again, here's another one. All these connections that we have to make. And all these connections are threaded connections which are leak points in the system. And the last thing we want in the system, steam leakage. So the thing is, is that I have standards and the standard is for your steam trap station installation. And remember, eliminate all leak points. And then lastly, here's our contact information. If you have any questions or if we could be of service, please contact us. Have a great day.